Any of you remember a radio personality named Paul Harvey? My dad listened to Paul Harvey, and I never knew exactly what the rest of the story was, but I loved the way he said it. And now, the rest of the story. Paul Harvey. Okay, so here's the rest of the story. From First Kings, we get uh, a very, uh, I would say, clean version in our lectionary. I'm going to tell you what happens kind of before, just before it says David lay down with his what does it say? He went to rest with his ancestors. Um, slept with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. Sounds so peaceful, doesn't it? Well, here's what happens just before that. When David's time to die drew near, he charged his son Solomon, saying, I'm going to go the way of all the earth. And he, now he gives him this charge, which is a beautiful thing. He says, be strong, be courageous, keep the, keep the charge of the Lord your God, walk in his ways, keep his statutes, his commandments, his ordinances, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses. Uh, that's the Torah. Okay, the first five books, of, as it is written in the law of Moses, so you may prosper in all you do and wherever you turn. This is a beautiful command that he is giving his son. To walk in the ways of God uh, that are described in the law of Moses. And then, I don't know what the... Oh, thank you. And then we get uh, the rest of the... No, I just turn it off because there's a few Beautiful command. Be courageous, be strong, walk in the ways of the Lord. Oh, and by the way, take care of these people. And he lists the people that he wants, you know, he has to you know what to do with them. If there's a priest, there's the commander of the army, and there's somebody that he David held a grudge against for years. Do away with them. I mean, it's like a scene out of the Godfather. <laughs> Remember when Don Vito, Don Vito dies, right? And Michael Corleone is going to take over the family. And so there's this beautiful scene in a church of a baptism. It's all in Latin, you know, and it goes on and on. The baptism of this baby that Michael Corleone is, it's his nephew, and he is the godfather for the baby. And um, the priest asks him, do you believe in God the Father? Yes. Do you believe in God the Son? Yes. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? Yes. Do you renounce the works of Satan and all the powers that corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Yes. And uh, Francis Coppola is the director, right? It's, it's brilliant because he intersects with this uh, beautiful baptism service what is happening outside the church that Michael Corleone has ordered. It's the execution of all these people that might threaten his power. So we've got carnage happening outside the church building, and in the church is this baptism and you know the renunciation of the devil and, and all his works. It's not too far off from what's happening in First Kings, <laughs> because uh, David sits peacefully with his ancestors, having given the charge to Solomon to take care of the of his enemies. Glavin's the commander of his army and the high priest, um, and this guy that he, you know, keeps a grudge against, uh, which Solomon does. And then he goes and prays this beautiful prayer that we do have in the lectionary. Um, this beautiful prayer asking for wisdom, for a wise and discerning heart. Now, a wise and discerning heart In the scripture, it was known as a listening heart. So, a listening heart uh, in the first, in Deuteronomy, first in the Torah, the law of Moses, a listening heart is one that really listens to what God's dream is, what God's desire is. And throughout the Torah, God's desire is to care for the vulnerable and the, uh, and the alien, the immigrants, the vulnerable, the widows and orphans. The immigrants. This is threaded throughout Torah 
So when you ask for God's wisdom, this is what you're asking for. And God provides it. God answers Solomon's prayer. And it says, you know, beautiful prayer. And I'm not only going to give you what you have asked for, but I'm going to give you wealth and a long life as well. Which is what exactly what happens. So we have this thread of wisdom, wealth, honor, and of power. And guess one which guess which wins out? It's there right in the beginning of his reign. Wealth and honor pretty much obscure of the wisdom that God has also granted him. Uh, Solomon is known for building this beautiful temple. Uh, it takes him, in, in the Bible time, it takes him seven years. Uh, he is also known for building his own palace, which takes 13 years. <laughs> the, the temple is beautiful. This is how uh, Frederick Buechner uh, talks about the temple. It stood three stories high, and you entered it through a soaring porch of Egyptian design that was flanked by two 30-foot freestanding bronze columns with carved lilies on top. It had cedar ceilings, cypress floors, and olive wood doors. And the amount of gold they used to trim it inside and out would have bankrupted Fort Knox. Uh, not only did he build a temple then for himself, he also, this is Frederick Buechner, who if you haven't read him, he's, he's wonderful. He also had them knock together a little place for his personal use and another for his wife, the daughter of Pharaoh. Now the daughter of Pharaoh is not his only wife. Uh, perhaps the reason they preferred separate bedrooms was that he had 699 more. <laughs> and just in case, they all happened to be busy at the same time that evening. He also had 300 other ladies who were ready to drop everything for him at a moment's notice. Solomon lived big, lived really big. Um, he did, he did, his time was known as a time of peace. So he did have a, a, a reign of peace. He also, uh, his trade policies brought in tremendous amounts of gold. Uh, into into his nation. There he is in the, in the book of Kings. I mean, it's good reading, you guys. It's just really good reading. It lists his daily, like the, the daily uh, provisions uh, for the temple, or not for the temple, but for his for himself. Um, it's somewhere in here. Uh, it has it because it's pretty amazing. Um, well, it was herds of cattle flocks of sheep, vats of grain and oil per day, per day. He had a person in charge of each month of the year, and that person was in charge of getting those provisions, right, to provide the palace with that kind of um, wealth of eating. So all the provisions, the, the building, all of this happened. How do you think it happened? slave labor. And it wasn't slaves of other countries, it was his own people. He did enforce the conscription of his own people, raised taxes through the roof to pay for not only the building, but all the provisions, all the gold, you know, all of this. So Solomon was a hard ruler. He was hard on his people. And the Book of Kings follows the trajectory of the, of the rulers of Israel. There's I don't remember how many kings there are, a lot, and only two of them find favor in the Lord's eyes. Power corrupts, and the Bible doesn't turn its eyes away from that. The Bible gives us a very clear-eyed picture of politics and government and power. And so part of what we draw from that is that God cares. God cares about political state of things. God cares about how governments are run. God cares about how we use the power that we have been given. Solomon, going back to Solomon, Solomon is a mixed bag, as we all are. He does good, and he does evil. He does both of those things. He prays well, and he does not so well. 
the good news from all of this is that we too, in the little realms of power that we have, we too do good and we do ill. We choose wisely and we choose not so wisely. And our prayer over and over and over again, our prayer is like Solomon's, give us wise and discerning minds and listening hearts. And in God's realm, listening hearts, wise and discerning choices are to care for the most vulnerable among us, the widows, the orphans, the immigrants, those who cannot, uh, are, are most vulnerable. This is wisdom in scriptural terms, in God's terms. May it be so that we ingest that wisdom, that we bring it into ourselves and let it inform our own lives and our own choices. Praise be to the God who gives us wisdom.